10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 114. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 114 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. My name is Nick Manella. What's going on? How are you? Hope you've had a great week. Hey, first things first, I got to apologize for not putting out a Motivation Monday podcast this week. My computer actually died over last weekend and I had to scramble to get a new rig together, get everything set up the way it was before and I kind of just getting around to that now. So didn't get a chance to do the Motivation Monday podcast. I do apologize for that, but we are back on track and I am ready to keep going with these episodes from here on out. So thanks for bearing with me. Uh, A couple of housekeeping items before we get started with the content for today. Uh, If you want to get the PDFs to this episode and every single other episode that we've ever done, head on over to our Patreon site. That's patreon.com slash 10 minute jazz lesson. Or you can head over to our website, 10 minute jazz lesson.com. And you can click on any one of the Patreon links that are on there. That'll bring you to our Patreon site, which is basically you donate a couple of bucks a month throw a couple of bucks a month into the pool and you get everything that we do Uh, it's only three bucks a month that's like pocket change for most of you probably doesn't mean much to you but it means a heck of a lot to us we are a listener supported show and this is really the way that we keep this quality content coming at you on a regular basis helps us you know with our hosting fees Things like when my computer dies and I have to buy a new one, that really, really helps to be able to uh, keep this stuff coming at you and hopefully keeping you going on becoming a better jazz musician. So if you feel like you got three bucks a month to spare and you want to throw it our way, we appreciate it more than you will ever know, and uh, that does a lot for us. So thanks a lot to everybody who has joined the Patreon site and decided to support us. Okay, let's get into today's episode. All right, so these next bunch of episodes are going to be all about what I like to call practice progressions. So we all know that when we practice, like let's say that we're learning a piece of vocabulary and we want to learn it in all 12 keys, or we want to really force ourselves into a workout that's going to take us around to all of our comfortable keys as well as all of our really, really uncomfortable keys, of which I have many and I'm sure that you do as well. There's particular ways that I really, really like to practice this stuff and particular ways that I give this stuff to my students that I think really, really helps. So let's think about the fact, okay, I'm going to learn a piece of vocabulary over a C major 7 chord. Now, I want to take it and I want to put it into all 12 keys and I do it. So, all right, I play this certain lick in C major 7. Then I stop, I sort of gather my thoughts and maybe I play it in C sharp major 7. Or maybe I play it in F major 7. Or maybe I play it in G major 7. And then I keep going, right? So I play the the line, I learn it, and then I kind of pause, think about the next key, and move on to it. But eventually what we want to do is we want to get to the point where this vocabulary or these ideas that we have are so second nature to us that we actually don't have to stop in between the keys. Because, I mean, really think about when you're playing over a tune, you really don't have time to stop and think about what you're going to play. So this is part of working on vocabulary or working on certain sounds that we want to get into our playing to a point where they're totally and completely automatic. And we can play them without really having to churn those gears in our brain, right? So there's a couple of these different progressions that I love. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about sort of the simplest one, the one that I like to use all the time. Uh, that I think is super valuable. And basically what this is, is taking one quality of chord. So we're going to start with a major seven chord. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to move right around the circle of fourths until we get through all 12 keys and we're back at the top. Now there's several reasons that this is my favorite 
and this is the one that I actually use the most. First of all, the circle of force is very melodic, and jazz moves in fourths anyways. Like, the majority of the time, it's moving in fourths. You think about a 2-5-1 progression, you think about a 3-6, 2-5-1 progression, it's all circle of fourth stuff. So I like this circle of fourths thing because it actually kind of sounds like a tune if you're practicing one quality of chord right around the circle of fourths. It's very natural, it's a very natural sounding thing to play some vocabulary over, to work on a concept, even just to play freely and see if you can get through all 12 keys without a major, major slip up, right? So on your PDF this week, what I've done is I've provided you with, I think, the basics for getting around this circle of fourths progression. I like to do this in three different ways with three different chord qualities. So the first is the one that I've already mentioned, which is major seven chords. The second is dominant seventh chords. And the third is minor seven chords. I feel like if you practice this stuff, you really are sort of covering your basic uh, outline of everything that's going to happen. Then if you want to make some alterations, if you want to make the chords a little bit harder, you totally can at that point. But by covering these three basics, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, you're really going to learn a lot and you're going to be able to handle yourself in most situations that are thrown at you. The other thing is that I feel like these progressions are useful for a variety of different things that you might be working on. So for instance, we already brought up the fact that maybe you're working on some vocabulary, right? And your goal at this point in your practice time is to actually be able to fit that vocabulary into all 12 keys. That's what you're going for. That is your goal at the end of the day, right? And then we already sort of mentioned too that you don't need to be working on vocabulary to use these progressions. You can just treat them like, all right, I'm going to play, I'm going to go for a certain sound, I'm not going to play the same thing in every key, but I'm going to go for maybe the same idea or broad-based sound over every key. So like, oh, okay, I want to use the sharp 11 in all 12 keys, I want to learn what that note is over every single chord. This progression is perfect for that. Another huge advantage to this is that you can use it Let's say you want to do one measure per key, which is what I've put on your PDF uh, for this week. But the beautiful thing is, is that you can extend this for as far as you want. So you could work on one key for eight measures and then go on to the next key. I mean, it's really the versatility of these progressions is amazing. And if you're not currently working on them and you feel like this is something that could benefit you, I really, really think you should investigate this. Grab these PDFs. They're already written out for you so that you don't have to sit down and write them yourself. All right, so let's get to some practical stuff over this. What I've also done at the end of your PDF this week is I've given you a one measure piece of vocabulary over C major seven. And what I would like you to do is, if you're just getting into this, you're gonna take that piece of vocabulary, you're gonna learn it in all 12 keys using the first system that I described. So you're gonna play it in one key, pause, figure it out in the next key. But you're really, you're gonna get this to the point where you can play it through all 12 keys over the first practice progression that I've given you without stopping. I don't care what tempo you do it at, do it at a really, really slow tempo. In fact, I suggest that. But really what we're going for is being able to take it around the cycle without any kind of pause, okay? So let me play that line for you, and I'm actually gonna play it for you over the progression so that you can hear exactly what I would like you to do in terms of getting this to the point that I think it should be at, all right? So here's the, the piece of vocabulary that I've provided for you on page two of your PDF, and I'm gonna be playing it over the first practice progression on page one.
So you could hear there was actually like one or two keys where I was behind a little bit. So that would be something that I would definitely have to work on. But you can see how this really, really tests you. This can be like the final test for if you have a piece of vocabulary or a concept really underneath your fingers and in your brain is by playing over one of these progressions. It will really point out your weaknesses and it will really tell you what key you need to work in uh, more and more. Okay, that, that's one of the best things. Getting your weaknesses pointed out to you either by yourself or by somebody else is one of the hardest things in the world, just like mentally, but it's also one of the best possible things that you can ever do for yourself to tell you the truth. So it's really important, get into these progressions, start working on them. Now, what we're gonna do is, we are going to go over several of these different progressions that I use uh, in order to get better, okay? So this is the first set of chord changes I work with, one quality of chord right around the circle of force. There are several others that I do to challenge myself, and we're gonna be going over those in the next couple of weeks. So there's a lot more to come on this, and I really think this is something where I'm not showing you something super specific. I'm showing you a way that I practice that is honestly one of the most valuable things I have in my arsenal of, of practice tools. These, these practice progressions come out basically every single day in my practice sessions. So this is something that I use, this is something that I truly believe in, and something that makes me better. So here's a brand new thing that we're gonna do here on the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. We're gonna create a Facebook group, not a fan page like our regular 10 Minute Jazz Lesson thing on Facebook, but this is gonna be a group page, all right? And what we're gonna call it is the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community. So if you go on Facebook and you search for 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Group, you'll be able to find this. And my goal with this is so that people can share what they've been working on. Some of the stuff that we show on the podcast that you're working on. And what we can do is we could really help each other out to get better at our instruments and get better at some of these concepts. If you'd like to discuss some of these concepts that I've been showing you with some of the other people that listen to the podcast and are trying to accomplish the same thing that you are, this is gonna be the place to do it. So make sure you hop on Facebook and you join that group. So the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Group. That's where we're gonna be. You can post videos of yourself playing. You can post questions. I'll be on there really, really consistently trying to help people out, give some more guidance than I can just on the show. And I think this will be a really, really great thing to bring all of us that listen to the show together and maybe we can get to know each other and we can really, really start to help each other out, okay? So what I'm gonna do to close the show here is I am going to play over this progression without any restrictions on myself. So I'm gonna do like two times through and I'm just gonna play. I, I'm not trying to accomplish any goal. I'm really just trying to check my fluency in all the different keys of these major seven chords here. All right, so listen to this. You could see, you could hear a little bit more of like the free form approach to this, which I think is also a really, really beautiful thing about it. And uh, let me know, let me know if you enjoyed this. In fact, go to the Facebook group, sign up for the group, and let me know on there uh, if you're having trouble with this or if you're feeling pretty good about it, if you feel like this could help you or if you feel like this is not gonna help you at all. Um, and we'll be back next week with a brand new practice progression for you. Make sure you go and grab the PDFs. If you're not a patron already and you got three bucks a month lying around that you're not gonna miss, like I said, it makes a huge difference to us. And if it doesn't make that big of a difference to you, we would really, really appreciate that support. It really keeps us going. All right, everybody, sorry for the long-winded podcast. We will see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.